Okay, Dave, so I'll tell you what, the fourth screen of this uh, entry seems to me that not quite completely finished, and then the fifth screen seems like it's a fully worked out orchestration, but it goes past the limit for the Brev entries, but I'll tell you what, just in this case, just because you did such a great job of orchestrating the section past C, what I'll do is I'm going to skip, and normally I would not do this, anybody who's watching, but um, just in this case, and I'll make this one exception, I will uh, I will just skip the uh, fourth screen and go on to the fifth screen in terms of evaluating things, all right? Just so that you get a chance to, you know, just have some, have some solid uh, orchestration evaluated by me all right because it's just that that fourth screen kind of just doesn't you know the ideas don't really look like they're all that worked out okay so <laughs> we've got a lot of tinkly celesta here that's very cool i you know i kind of i like this um this octave following i mean after a while i think that you wouldn't want to do that for very long but you know it's really it's not a big deal for the uh, the first clarinet because you can always trade off with a second clarinet, which is something you didn't do here, but you could have, right? You know, you've got like you know, you got two flutes and you use them nicely, um, and you could easily have two oboes, right? Um, you know, you could have your two oboes taking care of a lot of what the um, a lot of what the English horn is doing here. Uh, so you could definitely have two two clarinets trading off on some of this stuff so that it isn't just a an endurance test right that's just a huge endurance test for the uh, for the first clarinet you have clarinet one right so that assumes that there's a clarinet two right okay bass clarinet um, doesn't really have the same choices but you know seeing as how it's a doubling part at the octave you can leave out a note here or two just so that the player can kind of rest and take a breath and I think that that might have been what you intended with these um, eighth notes but it's better just to like just to have the you know just really have an a, be an obvious place to take a breath that's kind of hidden inside the music right where the the audience is just really not going to be listening to it okay um, and I notice you've marked up your harp try to put your dynamics for your harp um, like in between the staves right is where it goes just like just as if it were a piece of piano music so i actually kind of liked this um this you know th this was really kind of nice the um the the harp part and i felt that this was a pretty original take on the you know on that first couple of pages of the of the um of the of this piece the seamstress Sorry, I'm getting a little uh, punch drunk here. I'm having so much fun. Yeah, and, you know, pretty simple little ones and fives, and, you know, and uh, and so on from the bassoon part. Uh, it just really, you know, just, just a fun, fun score. And then just like a little bit, kind of like a tissue here of, of high string chords. So, you know, that all is going to kind of work. I mean, I think that you you would want to work on this quite a bit more before you said that it was a final effort, right? Uh, there's a lot more that you could be doing to this. Now, here, you do not have to mark forte, right? And, and I wouldn't mark forte here either. You don't have to mark forte on your English horn part. Um, here is where I would say solo because this is so obviously dominates everything, right? And there's no other, there's no interaction, there's no sense of, like, that's not really a symphonic sense. It really is a, an, a long extended part for just one single instrument, right? So here is where I would write solo. 
uh, but you wouldn't need to mark it F, right? Just mark, just, you know, just piano espressivo and put in some hairpins, right? Now, of course, marking it F makes it stand out of your, um, of your mock-up, right? But yeah, so, you know, here, like with the big, huge time signatures, this is a pretty standard, uh, you know, classical era transcription. You probably don't need to do the big, you know, this is really more, I feel this is more of a film music and modern music and, you know, really need to see it coming a mile away kind of uh, time signature approach. So just, you know, just a simple little nine eights. Um, you know, in each staff are, are probably going to do it. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, some people are really got kind of gotten into the habit and will defend it tooth and nail. Uh, I, I won't, you know, I will not contradict that defense, but just, just to mention that it really is a, you know, in this, especially in this arrangement, it really is kind of more of a pastiche, right? A calling back to that era and imagining what some orchestrator of the day or, or today would would uh, deal with it. So, so it's still really very classical oriented. Um, yeah, so you got your harp and and bassoons. Yeah, so the, really the harp is the only thing that needs to be marked up. So that could be mezzo forte. And this can be pianissimo just sort of, and, and I would put in like hairpins here at the end to just sort of fade it out um you know behind the english horn solo and and of course here i would be much more interested in seeing like p espressivo and then nuances right little hairpins kind of bringing out different parts of the phrase right um it, it is quite a bit of a time i mean even though this is this is a piece that is kind of goes on for you know it, it is goes pretty quickly it, it does kind of go on for a bit without really changing the context, right? Um, so it's kind of the same thing, just in a different key. And if that, you know, if that's, if that is something that you think is like works for you, then that's that's cool. Um, this is kind of neat. The um, the bassoon harmonies doing their things. There were a few wrong notes here and there in this piece, but nothing nothing huge. Um, yeah, and you know, so now here you're using the English horn as a second voice, like like as sort of as like second oboe, and you could have easily just used the second oboe on this. Like all of like D natural is no big deal to play piano on the oboe, but you know below that gets a little, you know, unrealistic to ha to match the other timbres. Um, and then, you know, of course, like, make sure that, like, all of your slurs are on both voices across the parts, right? Now, here, <clears throat> you can still put a, um, like, a slur across and then just put a tenuto on each note. And you'll get that, you'll get the continuation of the, you know, the da-da, kind of da-da thing. And then you go da uh you know what I mean? It, like, it, you sort of have the the same sense of motion and you don't have to have two fully articulated notes. It doesn't have to go dun dun or so if you got da da dun and then dun dun or sorry, let me sing that again. Da 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 see what I'm saying? So like it, it takes away having to fully articulate the second note and it just keeps everything like kind of in the in the groove. And then, you know, here's a here's a case where the um where the bass clarinet could be playing trills and and that is one of the least um kind of overactive of the of the low trill of the instruments that can play a low trill of course this isn't all that low you know this is the way that you've got it scored um it is going to sound like two octaves below right so you've, you've got your parts at um, you know two octaves apart right here. Uh, you could have gone with clarinet in A, and then that would have reduced the amount of sharps that the clarinet has to deal with down to just like, you know, it would, completely, and then just one flat, right? And then nothing you can do about bass clarinet in B flat. There are no A instruments. It would have been kind of cool if there were, but they're just really not needed. Uh, so, yeah. And that same approach ends up here. And I, I felt, you know, when the when the bass clarinet dropped out here, I just really felt the absence. Do you know what I mean? I, there was nothing kind of 
moderating or mellowing things or or getting ready to bridge things into the next section. All the same, I like this next section a lot. Okay, um, keep in mind that like this, this stuff isn't all that hard, but I mean it, it's kind of nice if they're you know if the if the strings are not asked to do things that are incredibly difficult just kind of casually right like for instance a lot of this stuff is would just take a lot of practice it's, it's kind of practically pian uh, sorry violin concerto type lines here and there you know it's it's the kind of thing where it'd be nice like if there were trade-offs between instrumental groups or uh, from you know in divisi kind of situations right so like I've mentioned on a previous score you know, what if you went, um, da -da -dum, then, uh, then the, like with the, like the, um, the top, sorry, excuse me, the, the first divisi cellos went, da -da -dum, and then the, uh, then the second divisi went, da -da -da -da. so you just have that overlapping line, and it's just really much, much easier on everybody, right, and, you know, that's probably what I would do if I were given this score and said, hey, clean this up and improve it, get it ready for the, uh, for it to be performed, I would probably just do these all divisi because it doesn't matter when you're playing so softly. You don't need to um, you don't need to worry about divisi stealing power from your part. And in fact, that whole thing about divisi losing lots of power is just you know it's, it's really exaggerated. Yes, in very loud passages that is a concern, but it's not a huge concern, and you know it shouldn't be something you obsess over your whole career. Because I barely even think about it, and I write lots of Divisi parts, even in loud music, and I get away with it, and it's fine. And you know, if you if you read some some late Romantic symphonies, you'll see lots of loud Divisi, and you know, this, I mean, like Ravel. Like I think there's a there's an example that I showed in the pictures at an exhibition of Ravel, um, where the uh, the strings were like both string groups, like, or excuse me, both violin groups, first and seconds were div divisi in three and they were matching up with like heavy brass. So, you know, it just depends on if you know what you're doing. Okay, so um, uh, this pizzicato bass stuff is really fun. It gets to be a little wearing after a while. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I'm wondering if there were some other choices you could have made harmonically, like with the patterns. Or, or maybe just kind of become a little bit more randomized as you went along so that it didn't become something that the ear got used to. Do you know what I mean? It's like you, you sort of want to keep the audience off its, you know, off its complacency a little bit when you're dealing with these dancey kinds of bass lines. And <clears throat> this could have been done simply as like, um, like a set of tremolos, like uh, just like do a dotted uh, dotted quarter note with uh, a double beam, right? I would write out the first one and then do dotted quarter note double beam and then that just saves a lot of space. Now we go back to like a really, you know, a very uh, plain and simple and direct scoring of the theme with oboe uh first well only oboe and first flute uh going you know playing a uh, two you know this is a situation where like the lower you get like you know um first you got on this a and then you're on g sharp and so on the lower you get the more the oboe starts to dominate right so I mean, this is doable. It, the players will balance if they hear themselves play along, but of course the oboe is always going to be way stronger on that A. Um, whereas the flute, uh, you know, if you once you get up a little bit farther, you don't ever quite get up into the place where the flute would just really dominate the oboe, but but that's, that's where things would be headed, right? Uh, I kind of like this. Um, this is kind of fun. And I wouldn't change it. I would say just go go ahead and have the second flute play the lower part. But I would actually do a ah, two flutes and uh, plus oboe all the way through here, right? Because you're going to have a kind of a wind band sound anyway. So this will sort of spread it a little bit without it sounding out of intonation or detuned or or anything like that. All right, uh, especially with good flute players. All right, now. Um, 
we get into this part right in here and um yeah 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 and here's where i feel like the scoring needs a lot of work right like just like i was saying before you know scoring very spreading very arching very looping kinds of um passages for these players that are kind of concerto like right you want to avoid the sense of concerto you 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 know you, you can make demands absolutely but you are sort of making demands that are more in line with the um with like what what regular section players need to deal with right is better some of the some of the phrasing in here could also be fixed up a little bit so you're you're basically just kind of playing an octave below and adding some harmony and so on and so forth um probably it's better to you know it's better to have probably just like octave violins uh, first violins and trumpet and then having some of the har harmony uh being played by like say horns like second uh second trumpet here and there but like not quite as close together or having having some of the harmony played like you know you could have you know more of these patterns played by just keep them in the middle strings here in the, in the viola and the and the cello and then use the second violin in a more harmonic way right you know and then here you just have these rippling lines which are it just it's going to be the music is going to feel like it's falling apart here a bit um from you know unless the orchestra is just absolutely top notch so i you know i just yeah um i would just say that would be a, a really important part to, to fix and rewrite and see if you could spread the parts between maybe divisi members or or in other ways that are are not quite so incredibly demanding okay now here I, I feel you pull out of it a little bit like some of the difficulty like the scoring is starting is heading towards a better place um yeah so you know you got your you, you know got clarinets and and oboe like or clarinet and oboe uh unison and then yeah so here's a here is that same idea um that i i just saw in a previous evaluation and that is to like harmonize at the 10th so here's another use of it like right away so that you know that works pretty good and 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 it's a pretty strong idea and you know it's 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 not a very full score do you see what do you know what i'm saying it just i feel like the in in some of these passages that you're scoring there isn't a lot of meat to the parts like they're the functions are there right but there's like uh there's no kind of background harmony or there's not a lot of harmonization in the parts um you know there's a lot of flurries and things like that so i would just say you know some of the same things that you would just need in another in any other style you're going to need here um i mean this is kind of fun you've got your french horns playing three-part harmony and um you know you have your have the second violins taking this top line here uh, that's all that's all sort of doable i mean I, f I feel that it's becoming the scoring is getting better as we go right and and this isn't too bad right in here you know um it doesn't i don't know it just doesn't quite completely gel i mean here's an example of using the harmony in a right way so it is stronger scoring right and at this point you could just put a um you could just put like a dotted half note with a double uh double beam tremolo on it to get to you know, to express that but yeah but i mean it's 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 i feel it's better scoring than right in here just like where the strings are going all over the place it's just like a question of craft and and maybe just having a little bit more um you know a little bit more bones to the to the music right in there okay now here i feel like even though this is really stripped down this is stronger but you what you need is the you need to enunciate the um these separate notes right because they you know because that really is like the line right it needs it like if it's all sort of played very very smoothly if in the first place it's a real 
it's a real burden to the trombone to be doing all this stuff and kind of pretending to slur, right? That's part of it. And then, you know, the other thing is just like really like they're brass instruments, right? And you've got your, you got Atu trombones playing really loudly and you've got your trumpets playing softly. So this all needs to balance, right? Um, so if they're all loud, they should all, you know, if it's, if it's a loud passage, they should all be loud and they should play, you know, like after playing this note, then, you know, articulate this note, no slur at all in the trumpet part, and then just like slur each of these um, pairs of eighth notes across the uh, across the um, the beams where needed. But yeah, um, yeah, just. I mean, I really like the you know the the bass right in here. I just feel like some of the functions could be a little bit more like could support a little bit more contrapuntally. All right, and then we get to this page in here and I felt that like you were still really working out a lot of the orchestration and so I'm going to trade you this page for the next page, all right? So just not going to comment on it cuz I'm I'm sure you wanted to work this out and get it quite a bit better uh before I gave it an evaluation. Yeah, so here we go. Here we are at C. So yeah, so here is a nicely worked out orchestration. I feel that it's, you know, that it is a lot stronger. And you're bringing in marimba here, which is very cool. You got some celesta. It re really should have like a um, like a brace, just like the harp on your celesta part. Um, just easier on the eye of the conductor and the two uh, that it should have like a um, like a grand staff, basically the the bars should cross both staves, just like in a harp part or a or a grand staff on a piano part, and so on. Okay, so you got this big, huge uh, triple octave uh, upper strings part, and you know I like the I just like the way that it's scored. I think it's neat, and this is neat with a with a little marimba part in there. You can put in a. Um, it, it, some people say that it doesn't really matter if you put a, uh, a slur over a marimba part, but I like to sort of, you know, if it's if there is a general sense of kind of slurring, you know, where the where the notes are grouped legato, I think that it is a good thing to put it into the marimba part because that that way the percussionist knows that there is another instrument that is playing it in that same way, right? They're like they'll he'll hear the violinist playing it under one bow and he'll see it in in his in his part as well, and if there's anything he can do with the way that he is uh, playing with his mallets, maybe choice of mallet or or just the you know the the way that he delivers, then he'll be able to do it. So I would say, yeah, definitely put in a slur over the whole group, just exactly the same way that you're doing it with everybody else. And the same thing here, you know what I mean? Just like you know, put a slur either over the whole thing or over the different groups. <clears throat> and yeah, then the little Celesta having these things. Okay, so so here's where things fall apart a little bit. This would be a way better part for Glockenspiel, right? Because Celesta is such a soft instrument. You can put a forte dynamic under that part as much as you like, but Celestas don't play forte, <laughs> right? They are a soft instrument. They just, you know, they're they have like one dynamic. So So when it sounds like really huge, when the Celesta just just sounds as you know really big like say in dance of the sugar plum fairy you know or 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 the uh hedwig's theme which i talked about recently in another evaluation um you know that's because there's nothing else going on so you really hear it clearly and then it cuts through it just seems to really clang on your ear and be almost too loud right but it's just a sense of proportion so the proportions just do not support that cello, or sorry, that celesta line at all, right? So it would be better for you to have, like, say, Glockenspiel, or you know, or if you just absolutely had to have celesta in there, I would like, I would team it up with, say, like piccolo or some other, or flute or some other kind of instrument where it would like help bring out some of its sweeter tones, right? But yeah, it's just it's it cannot com you know it cannot compete with these. And another thing is I'm seeing a lot of people writing celesta parts and they're writing them at pitch. Right. In other words, like they or as if they expect them to be at pitch. Um, and then like you, you end up with like 
pitches that go out of bounds either score too high or too low, right? So yeah, just always remember Celesta is octave transposing, right? And it, the range of it is from middle C up to the you know concert pitch is from middle C up to the highest C on the piano. But just think everything is written down an octave, right? So so C below middle C is the lowest written note. And two C's above the staff is the highest written note. So that's another thing is like I'm now I'm looking at Celesta parts and saying, is that the exact pitch that he intended or is the you know, or did he intend the concert pitch of an octave higher? Okay, so but be that as it may, this isn't gonna sound like much. It's great though that the marimba is right in here. So if it was if it were marimba trading off with um with the um with like say glockenspiel or or vibraphone then you know that would be a lot more you know that would make a lot more sense and it's just really turning into like a big grand waltz here okay and that's that's quite fun so so the simpleness you know the directness of this is very refreshing it's you know it's not not all that bad now here is like where i feel like you need to follow just like i was saying before like you know, enunciating the pitches, like if this is too slurred, um, then it, you know, you might not get as much emphasis as you, as you like. And just do not do this. Piano in the, you know, piano here and forte there. You know, they should all be forte or they should all be piano. Right? You just have to make your decision. But don't have the lower instruments play piano and the upper instruments play forte. Just like everybody is loud or everybody is soft, okay? And then just like, just score to those proportions because, you know, you mark, let's say you mark mezzo piano on one part and forte on another part and they're doing really similar things. They're playing kind of the same thing. Then like the, you know, the either the player's gonna see it as a mistake or they're going to say, oh, well, wow, that's a really loud mezzo piano my buddy over there is playing. So I better just play loudly too because that's the way mezzo piano was played, right? So it just doesn't make any sense either from that standpoint. And then here you're bringing, you want to bring out this line here, right? Um, like, see, so you're trying to emphasize these different parts, but do that by doubling them with other instruments, right? So like here you could, you could double these with like oboe and flute and everybody could be forte and these would still stand out really nicely or even like maybe trumpet on the lower line. And then here you could bring this out with like say trombones and, uh, you know, uh, tuba or whatever, or, or, uh, bassoon, excuse me, bassoons and playing octaves. Right. And, and still just have everybody playing, you know, um, so just whatever, if you're doing contrasting dynamics then have everybody be soft and then loud and then soft and then loud. Right. <clears throat> now you've got these, um, these cool arcing, um, winds. And this is, the place where you can score those fluttering lines. Because this kind of stuff is, you know, it's got a lot of sharps in it, but I mean, it's the kind of stuff that those instruments can play well, right? Um, it's almost worth it to like go in harmonic in a case like this where you got so many sharps. But of course, on an A clarinet, this is not going to be a big problem. Uh, you know, functionally, it's okay. Throwing in, a th you know, a couple of F double sharps, it's not going to be a big deal for your bass clarinet player. But yeah, but you should just go with a clarinet for this part just to make it the fingering way easier. And yeah, you know, this kind of ripping down thing, this is for second oboe. Do you know what I mean? You you can have two oboes, right? You can have two oboes and an English horn. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing stopping you in the in the challenge and just in the regular orchestra from, you know, assigning three wins, right? Okay. Clarinet and B flat. Excuse me for disregarding that this was not bass clarinet i apologize yeah so two clarinets in b in b flat which should be in a sorry for not catching that earlier okay and then yeah so here we've got some i feel this is kind of like the strongest place on this page you know you just you are really kind of thinking of groups of instruments and it would be nice to like see this kind of stuff spread out across the whole orchestra right so you know, t instead of tuba or, okay, no, tuba could be playing that, you know, that low A, you know, matching that arco. And you could also have like an octave higher, you could throw in the bassoon, 
like so that you get a nice octave there. Okay, then here we've got this descending part right here, which you have sort of doubled with um, with trumpets and so on. But you could have this line here doubled by like by bassoon or partially by clarinet before it gets too low. Uh, and then you've got these other pitches up here. These could be doubled by, um, you know, by like say your oboes and your and your English horn, right? And then you could bring this out with say oboe and then flute, right? You could just you could really just make this massive, right? Instead of just being a conversation between the strings and the brass, where the strings will always lose, right? If the str if the string parts are, you know, the if their similarity in timbre is is sort of matched by the um, by winds above, then the then it'll all seem stronger, right? Um, and then it will match the 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 sorry the brass a lot better. But it's still pretty cool. Um, I I think though, like just dropping off here, maybe this is where you ran out of of ideas for this particular part, or you'd work this orchestration out and you kind of didn't have enough time to do the rest of it there and so on. I mean that be that might be the expl explanation for some patchiness here and there but I mean still look Dave I mean it's like really great to, to see like a massive orchestral score from you I mean I think it's a great effort and it's something that you just like you just need to tinker on and tinker on and tinker on or, or maybe like take on a, a shorter excerpt and you know just get it really perfect and then we're go on to the next excerpt or whatever right but yeah but wow just I mean you always have such cool ideas that it's you know even though I'm just picking this apart and finding lots of little problems here and there it doesn't Take away the fact that this was a tremendous effort and and you had some really you know you got some amazing stuff in there and and made me think about a few things you know where i could have you know used an idea or two on some project of mine so so really neat um thank you so much for submitting this and you know you've always like tried to come up with something for these challenges so wow man just don't miss the 2020 one because i think you're gonna love it Thank you.